kidding. Who isn't happy to see Cody Rhodes? Who isn't happy tonight to see Cody Rhodes, ladies and gentlemen? How about you, Road Dog? Joe Cronin show, showing the love. Joe Cronin is a friend yeah. of mine. He does a lot of uh, a lot of uh, voice work, and and uh, he's a good guy. He's a good dude. Good Joe, friend of mine. Look at yeah, that yeah, cool yeah. logo. He's yeah. like, he's rocking and rolling, man. JC. Got a got an edgy way to present it, but but I love their style and I love Cronin show showing the love. Joe Cronin is a friend yeah. of mine. He does a lot of uh, a lot of uh, voice work and and uh, he's a good guy. He's a good dude. Good oh, friend of mine. Oh, you didn't know? Yo ass better call somebody. That's right. That's right. It's Monday night, and on a Monday night, you know there's only one way to do it, and that's to light this bitch up like you've never seen it before. And let me tell you something, if we got time, when it's all said and done, we might have to take a swing by some of your old ladies' houses and show them all what stiff really means. <laughs> Woo! You know it's that J O E down with the D O double G sauce live on a Monday night. Uh, I didn't tell you to end the music, bro. I didn't say to end that music. Play that shit again. Yeah. Oh. Now give me the cornet. Give me the cornet intro. Give me the cornet intro. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Joe. Yeah. 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 Dummy. Yeah. You want to have a battle? Dude, I'll do it any time. Any night. Any day. Any place you want to do it, L.A. night. We can do it, bro. You can be L.A. night. All night long, but I'm going to be Boston long, all night long, all right? And I'm talking about every single one of your past girlfriends, L.A. night. I'm going to go through the whole goddamn Rolodex. I'm going to find out every ring rat you ever stuck it in, and I'm going to go hook up with them, L.A. night, just so they can tell you to your face the yeah, you were L.A. night, but Joe Cronin was just right, and Boston Long all night. That's what's going to happen, L.A. night. I want you to realize it, that the guy that's shorter than you, that looks a little bit more trolly and maybe a little bit out of shape, still laid the pipe better than you so you can talk about the glitz and the glam and the night and the shades and all the other things but what really matters is how you deliver it and when i say it i mean man juice in a woman that's what i mean la night <laughs> yeah give me the cornet intro uh, Joe, if you're listening, you stupid fuck. He looks like a one of those guys that from Long Island that wants to be a white rapper, but he's 30-something years old, lives in his parents' basement with the droopy cap and the whatever, but he thinks he's Howard Stern, and he's got a cool way of talking in the microphone. Uh, and he's a shock jock or whatever, and somehow or another he accumulates followers on the on Twitter is fucking pathetic so please nobody listen to anything involving a guy named Joe Cronin because it's just so fucking sad all right <clears throat> I may or may not have just blown my voice out I'm not really sure I'm, I might have blown my voice out I'm not 100 percent um How's everybody doing, man? Monday Night Raw is over, and uh, and you know what? We're not going to be able to deal with this microphone in my hand this whole show, so let's just hook this thing right up here. There we go. Road Dog, I'm going to do some voiceover work for you. Uh, but no, seriously, uh, I, I, you know, I got to tell you something right off the bat. I thought Monday Night Raw was the most cohesive – 
And you know, a big part of that is because of Royal Rumble. You know, we we had heard we had heard the rumors that you know they were they were gonna have a pretty concise, uh, you know, um, way about going uh, way of going about things because of you know the stories that they wanted to tell in the Rumble and you know where things were gonna go from there. So you know that's we got that tonight on Raw, and that that's what made Raw a little bit better as well. Things were co- cohesive is the word I was looking for, cohesive. And so things were a bit cohesive tonight, and I like that. I thought the show ran fairly smoothly as well. So I thought that was nice um, that things ran that way. Uh, I thought we had um, – and what I mean by that is, you know, uh, I, I just thought that, you know, that the show – basically f- had a flow to it like there's sometimes when I watch raw where I'm sitting there and I'm thinking man this is never going to end this is like torturous a torturous 3 hours but tonight you know I didn't think it was a torturous 3 hours I thought stuff made sense it still is a bit lackluster ish I still think you know and I I would call the last couple of years a, like I don't know worse than like WrestleMania like I always compare the the worst time in WWE, one of the worst times, obviously, um, to me, um, was, uh, probably WrestleMania 11 time, like around that time, like somewhere between WrestleMania 9 and WrestleMania 11, I think things started getting a little bit better around WrestleMania 12, just a little bit, god damn, I really did blow my voice out screaming like an idiot at the beginning of the show, I fucked up my voice. Or my throat or something, I don't know. The only way to feel good about talking is to talk like Alex Jones. Here's the thing, Epstein Island, there's a bunch of pedos. He was right. Um, But anyway, what's going on, Chad? I hope you guys clicked that like button. Why do we only have 58 likes? What am I, a fucking loser? I mean, what, what, dude, what is this? Man, fucking JD is right. My channel is dead and I'm a loser. God damn, is he right. What is, what the fuck is this? Are you serious? Please put a bullet in my brain, bro. Put a bullet in me. Um, but no, thank you guys for being here. I hope you click the like button and stick the thumb up my rectum. Uh, the first thing is Cody Rhodes comes out, delivers a great opening promo. I thought a great one. Um, you know, the, the crowd is another thing to talk about tonight, man. The crowd was on point. Where were they tonight? Because normally, the, dude, what is going on in the world? The Philadelphia crowd is somewhat dead. The New York crowd, you know, some of the main crowds that you would expect to be really good recently have been not as good as you would expect. And I don't understand what what that what is going on there. But tonight. And it could be because it's the post show of the Royal Rumble. That's probably really the answer Um, tonight. Where were they? Alabama or something like that? They were like in some weird ass place, like a place that. A lot of times you'd be like, oh, they're in some weird southern area. because." And what I mean by that, I don't mean there's anything wrong with southern areas. Southern wrestling is obviously legendary. I'm just saying, uh, for whatever reason, excuse me, for whatever reason recently or over the last, you know, I would say the last 12 years or so around, the last 10, 12 years, um, for whatever reason, some of the southern states have been terrible. You know what I mean? Like like the Alabamas, the Oklahomas, some areas down in like St. Louis areas and stuff like that, Tennessee. Like it's just never a good crowd, never good. And yes, all right, so people are confirming it. It was Tulsa, Oklahoma. So I don't know what's going on in Oklahoma, dude, but they were, they were fired up tonight, out there in Oklahoma. So you, I mean, dude, I, what happened? I feel like Oklahoma is usually dead. So for Oklahoma to to kind of rattle off that type of energy tonight, man, that really made the show much better. It really added to the show. I got to tell you. For me, it made things a lot better. We're almost at 100 likes. Thank you, guys. If you guys want to donate to the show live and become the top donator of the stream, and I'll put it up here on the screen, uh, use the link in the top of the chat right now to use that if you want to donate to the show, Streamlabs. Uh, or you can just do a super chat or become a member. Uh, thank you to Luis uh, Urdaneta, I believe, became a member earlier. Thank you to him. Somebody else became a member. Sammy as well, man. Sammy, thank you for becoming a member earlier while the show was going on. That was going on. 
Uh, the crowd was chanting for Cody Rhodes to kick Dominic's ass. Yeah, they were chanting for a lot of things, though, tonight, man. The crowd was into it for the most part. And and I still I still feel like we're around the WrestleMania 11 time. You know, around WrestleMania 11, it was just Big Daddy Cool. You know what I mean? It was Shawn Michaels, Big Daddy Cool. And then you had kind of Jeff Jarrett. You know, you had Road Dog doing his thing. You had one, two, three kid, you know, and things like Razor Ramon and people like that. And, you know, at that time, it kind of felt like, uh, you know, that, um, what is the, what, what am I trying to say? <clears throat> I sort of got something in my throat. I think I blew my fucking voice box open or something screaming earlier. Um, we'll find out when I have the emergency later. Um, no, I think, uh. It's that, it's that, um, we just, it just, it had a lot of mid cards, like stars, you know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, Bret Hart too, but he took a big leave and everything. So at the time there was just a lot of mid card stars and it was like, okay, big daddy, cool diesel is the champion. You know, that never felt a hundred percent. I mean, it, it, you know, it was a down time and then, you know, Undertaker obviously was there too, but it just the whole thing felt sort of like a, a down time. They had some stars and they, they had some stuff going on, but it was just a weird period. And I feel like we've been in a really down time for a while here, but recently um, it still feels that way. You know, tonight it does too. God damn. I probably hacked up my fucking lungs screaming at the beginning of the show, man. I, I really did. I think I fucking blew my fucking throat open screaming at the beginning of the show. Um, my vocal cords like exploded. I think it's snots. They're like draining down here. That's what's going on. <laughs> but yeah, shout out to the road dog for for giving the love, man. I did not. I didn't. I expected him to just say, "Hey, uh, you know, whatever." But he was really pouring on nice things, which was kind of amazing. Um. Rhea Ripley was good. So we had uh, Cody Rhodes's, you know, intro, which was great. We had uh, Seth Rollins came out after after that. Well, the Judgment Day came out and challenged Cody. So that gives something for Cody to do. Hopefully Cody, you know, doesn't like, dude, I just hope he doesn't get injured. I know you can't think this way and no other, re most wrestlers don't think this way. And they've done this forever. Every day you're wrestling, every day you're working, no matter what, whatever. But there is that back party that's like, man, please don't get hurt again. Oh, my God. This is the moment. This is the road to WrestleMania. This is a story we're building here. Oh, my God, don't get hurt. So they do the thing with the Judgment Day. They set up what looks to be the main event tonight. Edge comes out at the beginning. Um, you know, I kind of like that. Touch, too. Didn't expect Edge tonight. And I like that they're finishing off that story. It's continuing, um, you know. Some people would say, oh, they should use Edge better or whatever. I, I thought it was fine. Um, I liked it for the most part. And then we get Gabriel, uh, or Gable, rather. Gable versus Seth Rollins. In a match, I actually really like this match. Seth Rollins is kind of working an injury throughout this match. Injury type of angle on the knee. Um, they did a lot of stuff. They did dragon screws. All kinds of stuff to show, you know, Seth Rollins is injured. His leg is hurt. Uh, Gable off the top rope, backflip, miss. Um, Love the roll up by Seth. Then he has to try to pick up Gable with his injured knee, which I thought was kind of stupid. But, but then he buckle bombs him. But then he he goes down in a heap because he hurt his leg. So it was a stupid idea to go throwing a guy like that when you get an injured leg and everything like that. So, um, but I thought they they I you know do a good job of selling the knee. Um, so I liked the match. I thought the match was fairly unique for an injury. You know, it was short but sweet, and I actually liked it. I actually really liked that match. So at this point, you know, we're actually 45 minutes into Raw, and Raw actually started, it kind of was, it was flying by a bit, to be honest. And sometimes Raw doesn't do that. It grinds, it annoys you, it bothers you, it drags. Um, but this did not really drag that much for me tonight, so that was good. And at this point, we're getting Candice LeRae in a match with uh, Io Sky, and they have a... They have a decent match as well. Bailey's outside the ring and barking the orders and um they they had an okay match, but at this point, you know, Raw's taking a bit of a, you know, now Raw's getting a little bit kind of like 
stale here, you know, at least what I'm thinking. So, we'll, you know, I'm kind of like, yeah, we'll see what happens. I I know that a lot of people think that I'm a sourpuss. I thought Becky and Bailey's interaction was all right. Like, I thought Becky did a really good job. I just don't buy Bailey as a heel that much. She's annoying and she's a heel, but I don't know, man. She's got a lot of tells that to her, to her, I don't know how to explain it, like, She's got a lot of tells that, like, oh, she's acting. Like, I, I'm never in it with Bailey. I just don't like her as a fa- as a as a heel. I like her as a face. I believe I I pretty much believe her as a face, and I like her as a face. I just don't believe Bailey is a heel. You know, she's always it's it's an over the top comedy heel kind of. I just don't get it. And then with like Becky being so savage and serious, it doesn't work for me because. You know, Bailey is so goofy and not realistic to me. And then Becky is so serious, kind of. Not that Becky's always the best either on the mic, but anyway, so I just didn't love it. It was okay, though. What Becky did was good. Rhea came out and cut a good promo. Um, you know, unfortunately, it's like Bailey kind of works as a heel, but just in the end, man, it's. I'll never. I'm, I'm almost never going to remember her for her heel work ever. I'm going to remember her for the That's the character. That's her character is Bailey. That's the character. You know what I mean? The, the kid friendly, lovable pigtails is always going to be what I remember. I'm never going to remember this this whatever this is. But they need someone to be that right now. So it's kind of like, all right, well but what else are we going to do? You know, so what are you going to do? Um, I think, by the way, Kevin, I love, I really like Kevin as a backstage announcer, just like I like Byron Saxton as a backstage announcer. The two of them are good. They got good presence of voice and whatever else. But man, Kevin is not a raw commentator. I don't care how long you stick him out there. He is not good enough to be to transcend as a, as a lead commentator on raw. I don't care what anybody says. You're sour, Joe. They didn't hire you on commentary. You're mad, you're bitter, you're upset. I don't care what you say. Maybe I am a little bit bitter, but it's only because I know I'd do a better job. There I'm telling you and maybe I wouldn't do maybe I would have more mistakes than the guy. I don't know. But the bottom line is the passion that I have is different. The guy is really good to be able to sit there, take the producer cues, learn all the stuff. He really doesn't make any mistakes. Like, if I want to say something really good about Kevin as a commentator is that he, he really doesn't make any mistakes. He's on point with what he's doing and what he's delivering and driving. Sometimes he's a bit quiet. And I think there's a major problem because sometimes Corey Graves has to be the excited one, whereas Kevin sits back as the announcer guy and he fades away into obscurity and he'll just never be a Jim Ross or even a Michael Cole. And I don't even think Cole is always that powerful, but Cole, he won't even be any of those. He's very safe. He nails it as far as accuracy, it feels like, and setting up and timing and stuff like that but he'll never be a memorable announcer other than if he stayed the announcer for 10 years, you'd be like, Oh yeah, the feels. Yeah. I miss that guy. Kind of, but he'll never be Jim Ross or those type of guys. But what he could be is a great memorable backstage announcer that you would, uh, that you would grow fond of. Cause I like him in that role. I love Kevin as a backstage announcer. I can't even remember his last name right now. What's Kevin's name? I don't even remember. I don't care if it wasn't me on commentary. Hire somebody else with passion. I know you I know you can't hire more Ronaldo. I get it. The guy's afraid of his own shadow. So you can't be like, hey, WrestleMania's coming up, but we don't know if more Ronaldo's gonna be here because he might have seen his own shadow in the su- in the streets. And I know it's not funny. He's got a real thing. Listen, I got depression. I have problems too. I get it. I don't have those problems, but I, I have, you know, I've broken down before and had problems. I get it. It's not cool. But um, 
you know, in the and that's not his fault that he's you know has to deal with this. But in the end, you can't rely on someone who's going to go missing every five minutes because they you know something happened mentally. You know, you need to have that announcer ready to go. Patrick Kelly, thank Kevin. Kevin Patrick, thank you. Sorry, I like so I like Kevin Patrick. I just don't like him as a raw announcer. Absolutely no, 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 no. Absolutely no. It'd be like Lord Alfred Hayes one time. I heard Lord Alfred Hayes have to call an entire show one time, and it was bizarre. Like Lord Alfred Hayes was great when he would do like color commentary, but when he had to call the whole thing, he's like. And I don't believe it, Bret Hart, with that. Like, but he was good too. It's weird. Lord Alfred Hayes was good. Like, he was better. Even he had a, a charisma of sorts that was that was good. It's weird to explain, in an old timey way. Um. And yeah, so maybe I'm a bit bitter. Maybe I, maybe I am. I'm a scumbag. I'm a bitter person. You know, I mean, I'm 38 years old. You know, I don't have much time left to try to you know, call hockey or wrestling or something, but it's just like, man, watching this, it just, oh my God, I'm sitting at home and I just, I want to just take, I want to just, I want to, I want to go to the arena and hit Kevin Patrick in the back with a steel chair, jump over the barricade and call raw like it should be called. I want to call Monday night raw like it should be called, but whatever. I would love to do color commentary too and just really be a prick, but I probably couldn't. I don't think you could do that with me on Raw. I think maybe in AEW, yes, I could do it. But in WWE, it's so sanitary that, you know, we'd have to be really careful with things I said or say. Um, I would certainly be careful. I wouldn't say anything crazy, but I mean, you know what I mean? You got to be a little careful. But uh, yeah, I don't know, man. I just, the, the Raw announced team is still bizarre. I really like Corey Graves. Um, in many ways, I, I, I don't, I, again, again, Bobby Heenan, Jerry, the King Lawler, Corey Graves, you know, and then people below that. So Corey Graves, again, is a guy who's safely doing a good job, but again, it's safely doing a good job. Corey Graves, Jesse Ventura, Jesse Ventura is better. Corey Graves, Bobby, the brain Heenan, Bobby, the brain Heenan's better. Corey Graves, Jerry, the King Lawler. Jerry the King Lawler's better. Corey Graves, Nigel McGinnis, I take Nigel McGinnis. But I like Corey Graves. But I would rather Corey Graves be like a third guy. So if there was if you could have a ring and a, a commentator and then another guy, and then Corey Graves is like the third man in. But then again, Corey Graves has also been doing a great job at yelling and getting excited when things happen because Kevin Patrick doesn't. And the same thing with the guy before, the MMA Joe Rogan number two wannabe guy, that guy didn't do it either. And it was like, and I don't know if that's designed that way. Like, don't get excited. Let Corey Graves do it. Now, if that's the plan, why? But it feels like that's the plan. Or to me, it just feels like these announcers don't have that that over the top or that excitement level of wrestling, and I don't know why that is. But I, 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 it, par, I love and hate Corey Graves. I don't like Graves a lot of times, but there's a lot of times I do like Graves. One thing, uh, another thing that Corey Graves does well is when a wrestler screws something up or when something gets screwed up or messed up, Corey Graves does a great job of covering it up the right way, the way I would do it, and the way that you should do it. And I really, really like that about Graves. Um, and I, I'm trying to think of the example the other night. I, there's a lot of examples of it. But the other night it was really good. He said something about like, you know, oh, he, and you see that? He made a mistake. And now because of that, you know, look at what happened. You know, something like that. And it was perfect. Because when you don't call it out, it's super awkward. I don't know why, but recently a lot of announcers have got in the habit of almost ignoring it. Or like trying, or like stop. They stop talking. They, they either they stop talking, and like they're watching. Like, uh oh, they don't know what to say. But Corey Graves just goes right at it. Every single time there's a botch or a screw up, you should jump on it as an announcer. You shouldn't be like waiting and letting there be dead air after a guy just made a mistake. You should be jumping in to fill the gap and explain what just happened, because that's the only way to make it legitimate. 
Like if a guy's going on the top rope, this is going to be amazing, and then he falls, and then he tries to get back up again, and then right after that, the guy reverses it. Use that. You know what I mean? When, when he falls, you go, wow, see, 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 maybe you shouldn't be going for a big risk right now. Look what just happened. He slipped. Well, he's still going to go for it anyway. Here we go. Oh, and it's reversed. And then Corey Graves come in and say, you know, see what a stupid thing to do or like see what a mistake he made. He tried to execute the move even though he screwed up the first time. He made a mistake and that gave him enough time to recover. And look what happened. You might be right, you know. He went to the well too many times. Yeah, he should have just abandoned the move when he messed it up the first time. He should have just gone to something else. And as a wrestler, that's when you got to know when to, you know, go to plan B. You know, that sort of that sort of stuff. That's not really a good example. That's not exactly the example, but just being able to hurry up and fill that in and f- start filling in the story. You know, just like you would for any other thing like in baseball if a guy screwed up or something got messed up, call it. And a lot of people don't do that. And believe it or not, Corey Graves is one of the only people that does it. When it happens, Kevin Patrick doesn't do it a lot of times. He would just say like, oh, and then they would be quiet. And then Graves would come in and be like, see that? He, you know, And you could see how slippery the ropes are or whatever, it's, whatever it is that he says. Whatever it is. So, you know, anyway. Do we have any Super Chats or donations? It's Monday Night Raw. Why do I still do this? Shit bum. Elimination Chamber, February 18th, WrestleMania, April 1st and 2nd. Then next closest PPV is Money and Bank on July 1st. Wow. Really? So April, May, June, July. So are you serious? This has got to be another pay-per-view happening. That'd be a huge break. That'd be a huge break, right? April, Money in the Bank in July. April, all of April, all of May, all of June, that's three months off. They've got to be announcing either Saudi Arabia in the middle of that or announcing like, you know, some big pay-per-view or something. I I don't know, man. Something's got to be going on. They can't be taking three months off. I can't imagine that. I mean, I can see them two months, you know, but man, I can't imagine that many months. Tell him about it, Road Dog. Yeah, yeah, yeah cool yeah. logo. He's yeah. Like, he's rocking a Joe Cronin show, showing the love. Joe Cronin is a friend yeah. of mine. He does a lot of uh, a lot of uh, voice work, and and uh, he's a good guy. He's a good dude. Joe, good friend he, of mine. Look at yeah, that yeah, cool yeah. logo. He's yeah. like, he's rocking and rolling, man. JC. JCS. Um, Road Dog guys, go check out his podcast. Have you not been watching the Road Dogs podcast? Because if you're not watching the Oh, you didn't know. I mean, dude, it's a gem. It is a diamond in the rough. Absolutely a diamond in the rough. I mean, dude, these guys just dropped some fantastic stuff on uh road on uh on Road Dog's podcast. And it's 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 so good, man. They're approaching ten thousand subscribers on YouTube. Road Dog on if Vince McMahon was hands on with NXT. That came out four hours ago. It's only got fifty eight views. That's crazy. There is some knowledge bombs going on in this. And you gotta listen to it. The Road Dog. Oh, you didn't know. You better your ass better watch and subscribe. Okay? To the Road Dog D O Double G. So uh go give the Road Dog uh, some some love. Because I do voiceover work, you know. I got a cool way of talking in the microphone. Right, Jim Cornette? Jim Cornette. Uh, Joe, if you're listening, you stupid fuck. He looks like a one of those guys that from Long Island that wants to be a white rapper, but he's 30-something years old, lives in his parents' basement with the droopy cap and the whatever, but he thinks he's Howard Stern, and he's got a cool way of talking in the microphone. And he's got a cool way of talking in the microphone. That was <laughs> I know Jim Cornette hates me for real, but um if you could go back and tell eleven year old me or twelve year old me or fuck, if you could go back and tell sixteen year old me, someday Jim Cornette's gonna cut a promo like that on you and he's gonna say, He's got a cool way of talking in the microphone. <laughs> like as if that's a bad like 
I don't know, man. I love I love Cornette. I don't care if he fuck. I don't care if Jim Cornette hates me. I will. I'm cucking for him right now. I fucking love you, Jim. I hope you hate that I love you. You raised a piece of shit. How about that? Carmella's tits are back. Rick Boog's return reminded me of Triple H's in O2. What a moment. I think he's product of Bobby Ruda and Rick Steiner fucking. Yeah, he does Eagles look like that. Eagles at Mania. Real American Nightmare is Memphis Police. Odds uh, on Cody injury. Rick Boog's. I, 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 did, I did think that, man. Rick Boog's looks like Bobby Rude and Rick Rude's love child. That is crazy. And accurate, by the way. Wow. That's crazy. You know, I'm almost 40 years old, so I can't be 30-something years old with a droopy cap anymore because I'm almost 40. Tell 25-year-old Joey who's one day going to fight Ryback. Was Ryback even a thing when I was 25? I don't even think Ryback was in the company then, was he? Maybe he was. I mean, maybe tell 30-year-old me that I was going to almost... I, I wouldn't have fought Ryback. I mean, maybe he would have maybe he would have tried to fight me, but I was... Do a little basketball dance. I was just going up to Ryback to say sorry for anything that offended him, and I hope he's okay. Devil worshippers. That's all. I'll be honest. I'd like to take a big bite out of your face. Road dog sucks too bad that heart attack didn't finish the job with a trailer park piece of trash. Well, you're a dildo. Well, that's not nice, but thanks for the three dollars. I'm gonna buy a candy bar tomorrow with that three bucks. I'm glad that the heart attack did not finish. Hey, Road Bullfrog dog. is a moron. I love the Road Dog. Road Dog's a good guy, man. Hey, what up, everyone? Yo, can someone please tell me why the Elimination Chamber match is for the United States title? Like, let's keep it real. In the past 10 to 15 years, the pay-per-view in between Rumble and Mania is usually bad or unnecessary. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, there I mean, there were times where I think when they had so many mega stars and things were crazy that the Elimination Chamber in some ways made sense, right? It was a way that if somebody gets hurt, they can make up for it. If they had to get the belt off of somebody and do something different, they could do that. Like, it's an oh shit moment when both belts were out there. There was a time I don't really think that it's needed anymore. I think the Elimination Chamber should be like Money in the Bank. and Or maybe not Money in the Bank, but the Elimination Chamber should just happen whenever they need it, like the Hell in a Cell. There shouldn't be a Hell in a Cell pay-per-view. Hell in a Cell is the worst example. Hell in a Cell is the worst. There is no reason to have Hell in a Cell. It's so ridiculous because then you have to pigeonhole a couple of people into a cell match. It it, it doesn't. It's so stupid. Hell in a Cell should be something that happens spontaneously when there's a crazy feud or something's going down. There should not be a pay-per-view theme. I mean, at one point it was a good idea, and I understand why they did it. But after a little while, you're like, you know what? This doesn't. This isn't really a good idea anymore, and it shouldn't be a pay per view anymore. Uh, I I don't think Elimination Chamber should be anymore, but I don't know, man. I, I just think they see it as a themed big pay per view show. Maybe it was already planned, so they got to do it. You know, because I mean, this was already planned. It's not like Triple H can now pull the plug. So if Triple H has the idea that he wants to change things around, that's cool. He probably will if he can, but he he probably couldn't change this. Because the stuff is already booked and set in motion for a while. So, you know, he, he gets to book it and do kind of what he wants with it. But he didn't really, I don't think, necessarily get to lay the um, the name of the show out and that strategically. I think maybe in, maybe in the next two to three months, maybe, uh, or, or six months, maybe. I don't even, I don't know how far out the WWE is booked right now. I'm assuming they're pretty far booked out. I feel like they usually they're booked six to eight months ahead of time, you know. So if you think about it, we'd be coming up on that in about three more months, maybe. Then Triple H would have the freedom to start to change pay per view pay per views around and, and things like that. I, I don't think he has the ability right now to do it. Yeah, Extreme Rules needs to go as well. You know, that's another one. 
move that shit around real quick. Well, yeah, that's the one last elimination chamber I heard, says Mark McLovin in the chat. Yeah, you know, it, pro- it probably could be, and it probably is, because like you said, it may- this is making sense, you know, otherwise. But uh, yeah, man, check out Road Dog. They canceled day one. That's true. They did cancel day one. I mean, that was ticket sales, though. You don't sell tickets. You don't do well enough. You know, you're gonna get you're gonna get canceled. Um, I thought Rick Boog's you know segment was like whatever. Okay, how about Baron Corbin getting rolled up again? You know, I coined the phrase. Does anybody realize this? I've heard other people say this now, other places. I coined the phrase, Baron Fruit Roll Up Corbin. Way back, way back on the third roll up. It was the third important roll-up of Baron Corbin four years ago or something like that. Five years ago? I don't know what it was. It was a while ago. And, you know, since then, the guy just always gets rolled up. It's a clear joke in the back. It's a clear joke. I mean, dude, I started. we started calling him Baron Fruit Roll-Up Corbin after the third, second or third major time he got rolled up. And we were like, dude... This is the second or third time now he's been rolled up in a major match for him. What the fuck is going on? And that was fucking four years ago or something. And since then, there's been a barrage. I mean, bro, this guy, and this is not a joke. I believe this to be true, and they should fucking announce it. I honestly believe, and I'm going to make a dead serious statement right now that's amazing. Do you want to know what it is? I believe Baron Corbin has lost a match due to a roll-up more than any superstar in the history of the WWE, WCW, or any other company. I don't think anybody has lost a match via roll-up more than Baron Corbin. I believe strongly with like extreme confidence that nobody has been rolled up as many times as him. I think he owns the record for the most roll-up losses. Guarantee it. Guarantee it. There's no no way he doesn't. I don't know what that means. Do a little basketball but dance I believe off it to be the concrete. True. I mean, I'm just so sick of you little meth head devil worshippers. I'll be honest, I'd like to take a big bite out of your face. It makes sense for Rhea Ripley to fight Charlotte because Rhea Ripley already won the Raw Women's title and the SmackDown title is the only title she hasn't won yet. And she is going to get her win back from the mania she lost three years ago to Charlotte. Great point, Pacharo. You know, the other night I I wanted her to face uh, Charlotte. And everybody was saying that she wouldn't. She would face Bianca Belair. But, uh, yeah, so interesting there. Jeff Hardy has the most roll-ups in a car. Oh, my God. Come on. The Miz, is, the Miz cut a promo, and I literally I actually tuned out. Bailey again was kind of cringy. And my God, bro, Chelsea Green came on the screen. Dude, I, I I have to do something when I'm done my show tonight because Chelsea Green. Seriously. And Carmella, dude, the women on the show, listen, not to be a pig piece of shit, but the women on the show, man, were giving people, you know, I mean, that was, I mean, listen, this is what they want to do. That was crazy. The women tonight, like, what the hell? Um... J-Rod's giving the show a 6.5 out of 10. Let me take a look at the poll and see what you guys are saying. 
I'm glad that Cody Rhodes didn't get skipped after Vince left. You know, the same plans that Cody had for him are still going. You know, without with Vince leaving, it's still the plan is Cody. I I, I am because I we some people were really worried about that. Honestly, you had to be a little worried. Like would would you know the new regime say you know what I hate this guy ha huh, let's cancel this you know and they didn't they said you know and Triple H is always Triple H has been from what I understand and maybe I could be wrong but Triple H just seems to do the right thing a lot you know what I mean maybe back in the way back way way back on the day he didn't always do the right thing right but none of us do but he seems to try to do the right thing by people is what I mean. I mean, I don't mean the right thing. Like everything I think should happen is the right thing. That's not what I mean. I just mean like he seems to be doing right by a lot of people and, and kind of being loyal to a lot of people. If you haven't noticed that about triple H recently, like to me, he's been very loyal to a lot of people. I think triple H, um, how was Monday night raw tonight? 13% of you said amazing. But 44% of you said good, and that's going to win the poll so far out of 382 votes. Good. 44%. Blah, 35%. That's not good. If you add that, 45% say blah and terrible. But uh, in the end, uh, this is going to end up being a thumbs up, a slight thumbs up from you guys, the JCS Army. So, man, good to know. Good to know. Man, her fucking... How do you concentrate? I'm not... Hey, listen, my wife... I don't need to see anything because my wife just so are crazy that, like... But good Lord, lo look at this. My God. I really wanted Adam Pierce to go... Are you supposed to be wearing that? I thought it would have been really funny if Adam Pierce was like... Are you supposed to be wearing that? You know, like... I, I don't know why, but... Just because it was so crazy, like something almost had to be said with how just fire she looked. And Carmella, too. God damn. The women on fire back there. Carmella? By the way, Carmella's the queen of Staten Island. Isn't she from Massachusetts? Isn't Carmella from, like, Worcester? Pretty sure. And isn't her name Leah like my wife? Am I wrong? Oh, my God. She's almost born the same time as my wife. Carmela and Leah are almost the same age. Yeah. Carmela and my wife, Leah, are from are the same age. Actually, Carmella is older by a month. And they have the same name, Leah. That's weird. But yeah, if she's from Spencer, Massachusetts. See? Spencer, Mass. But she says she's from Staten Island. Why would you want to be from Staten Island when you're a Massachusetts person? I don't know, bro. They'd be like, hey, you know what, Joe? Can you be from Brooklyn? I'd be like, what the fuck? No. I know, it's wrestling. Come on. It's a character. Wouldn't you want to be the princess of Boston? Or the Boston badass or something like that? I don't know. She does act like a New Yorker, though, like a scumbag New Yorker. So I will say uh, that does make sense. You know, and she's all tanned up and everything like that. Like a nasty, like, New Jersey person or something. So, you know. Kind of weird, though. Kind of weird. Anyway, Oscar was great. I fucking enjoy Oscar. And then, you know, Cody and Finn had an all right little uh, main event match. Edge came out. Chaos broke out. We'll see where all this goes coming. Uh, looks like we'll get the Judgment Day versus Edge and Cody in some kind of multi-tag match. 
try to help keep Cody safe for uh, the WrestleMania uh, in Elimination Chamber. Obviously, they're going to need another person, right? There's going to be another guy. Probably going to be Rey Mysterio, right? So you would think it'd be Rey Mysterio, Edge, and Cody versus the Judgment Day, maybe? I'm assuming that's where they're going. I Maybe, maybe I'm not right, but that's what I would think. Yeah, it's her character, Danny. I don't know. I'm being I'm being weird. I'm just being a cocksucker because I'm like, oh, Massachusetts. Yeah. Like like anybody really wants to be from here. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, Oscar does look amazing. I love Oscar. Oscar's older than I am. Pretty pretty crazy, man. But uh listen, guys. It's gonna do it for me. I hope you guys can click the like button. Stick the thumb up my rectum. And I hope you guys can become patrons on patreon.com slash Joe Cronin Show if you guys want to support the channel. Um, or you can use the donation links, as always. Um, and uh, was there anything else? Uh, no, I... Um, uh, John H., thank you for becoming a $5 patron. And... Uh, well, that was it, actually. Well, I got everybody. Thank you guys for being here. I'm going to give uh, tonight's Monday Night Raw a... Uh, I'm going to give it a 5.5 out of 10. 5.5 out of 10, an all right show. Maybe I'm maybe I'm being harsh. You know, I don't know. Maybe it's a 6 out of 10, you know. But... No. I'm going 5.5. 5.5 out of 10 for tonight's show. Hey man, I love you guys. Thank you so much for being here. Stay safe. I know I don't I know I used to do these streams longer, but um you know, like I said I had to get a, another job and stuff like that. So I'm super I uh, got to be up really super early in the morning and everything and I hope you guys all stay safe. Be good. And uh you know, um I got yelled at by a rich person today. It was crazy, man. This guy was nuts. I was at his house trying to sell him uh, roof stuff. I mean, he made the appointment. And uh, this guy was, like, yelling at me on the phone. You know what I mean? About all this crazy <laughs> stuff. And I was like, all right. But he was so mean and angry and weirdly mean that it was like, wow. Damn, bro. So basically, I just was like, I, I like, started getting angry, but I knew I couldn't get angry. So I just said to him, I said, well, I'm a loser. I mean, you know, I mean, you know. I mean, dude, you're talking to a loser right now. So, I mean, what do you expect? You know what I mean? Because he was mad that he couldn't get answers about something from somebody else and somebody else and something else. And now normally I'm really good at diffusing people and being like, hey, man, don't worry about it. Listen, I'm going to take care of you and get it all set up. But like, he was so crazy and mean and a cocksucker. Like he was a real bad person that I was like, you know what, dude, fuck this. I don't even want to try to diffuse this. So he's like. He's acting like this and crazy. And I'm like, well, but dude, yeah, I mean, here's the thing, man. Like, you're a smart guy and, a, and rich and, you know, you're you're good, you know. Most people are stupid, you know, like me. Like, I'm like a failure and a loser. So you're talking to like a loser and a failure. So, of course, you're going to be frustrated. You know what I mean? Like, you're smart, good, and successful. Like, I'm a, like a miserable little fucking pissant loser. You know what I mean? And the guy was like... He didn't know what to say. He was, he was like, what? He didn't fucking know, dude. He didn't know what to say. So after a few minutes of that, he was like, well, you know, you know, you're, you know, it's not you, you know, it's not you. It's just what I've been through. It's just fucking unbelievable and everything. And I'm like, yeah, I get it, man. It's like, dude, you're good. You're, you got to deal with stupid. You know what I mean? I mean, dude, like, I don't know what it would be like to have like this, this fucking $5 million house you have. And then to run business, you know, have a business and like, and just have like seven cars in the driveway like you have and everything like that. Like, I don't know. I mean, dude, it's got to be crazy to try to talk to somebody to get a real answer about something. You know what I mean? I mean, every week I worry about paying the bills and, you know, are they going to take my house from me? And am I going to go to jail for this? And did I, you know, I've got to, I barely see my kids and shit like that. And I get anxiety and all this stuff. I was like, but yeah, that's why, because that's why my life is like that, because I wouldn't know how to to possibly have to put up with making three phone calls 
to a company like mine to get a stupid fucking answer about something. You know what I mean? And the, the guy was like, I don't know. Anyway, uh, I'll just talk to you later. <laughs> he, did, he had no idea what to do. But I snapped because he was so mean. He was just so mean and crazy. And I was like, hey, oh, I'll take care of it for you. And he still was going. And it was like crazy, bro. You ever do that? Listen, if you're at work this week and someone's a piece of shit to you like that, just be like, listen, dude. I'm sorry. Like, I'm kind of an asshole idiot. You know, <laughs> like, you're probably smart. I'm really a dumb moron, but I will try to help you the best I can, even though I'm a stupid person. Like, just do that and see what they do. <laughs> like, they'll just free, they'll be like, what? I don't know what to, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> like, they don't know what to do, bro. I'm out of here. Good night. I love you guys. Hit the like button, subscribe, and you do the thing. And I don't know if I'll be doing a raw review next week, but um, I'll be doing videos. So stick around. It's the Joe Cronin Show. And uh, enjoy the fun. WrestleMania is coming. It goes Hollywood again. Cody Rhodes' next tattoo make, gives me anxiety, but I like it. Uh, Joe, if you're listening, you stupid fuck. He looks like a one of those guys that from Long Island that wants to be a white rapper, but he's 30-something years old, lives in his parents' basement with the droopy cap and the whatever, but he thinks he's Howard Stern, and he's got a cool way of talking in the microphone, uh, and he's a shock jock or whatever, and somehow or another he accumulates followers on the on twitter is fucking pathetic so please nobody listen to anything involving a guy named joe cronin because it's just so fucking sad me omega <laughs> oh biggest most jacked guy and please let me come